Guys, in this video, let us look at what acoustic reflex is. Reflex, okay. So, this is a reflex action. Suddenly, it happens. So, it is acoustic reflex. Let us look at what this is, okay. This is happening in the ear, right. And it is uh, involving the nerves in the brain. So, basically, what happens when a loud sound is heard, okay. A loud sound is heard. The stapedial muscles, okay. The stapedius muscle, there are two stapedius muscles, right. And this here one and this here one, both of them will contract. So, you are giving the loud sound only in one ear, let us say, you are putting a uh, earphone uh, or a headphone on this guy and he is getting loud sound only on this ear. But the stapedius muscle in both of the ears will contract, okay, that will be acoustic reflex, okay. So, what exactly is happening here? Contraction, say contraction, contraction of, of stapedius, stapedius muscle. Bilateral. Bilateral. So, in both the ears it will contract. Okay. So, let us look at this. So, you are giving a loud sound that is like uh, above the threshold of hearing you are giving some 70 to 100 uh, decibels. Okay. Above the threshold of hearing. So, that loud it will be. Right. In one ear. Okay. In one ear they give it. Right. And they will observe the contraction of the stapedius muscle. You can check the contraction on the contralateral side or you can check the contraction on the ipsilateral side. So, now let us understand this pathway. So, how exactly is the signal going from here to here or how exactly from the cochlea it has come to this stapedius muscle also. So, to the ipsilateral how the information came to the stapedius. On the contralateral how did the information reach the stapedius. So, this pathway let us look at. Okay. Yes, are you ready to look at the pathway for acoustic reflex? Okay. So, basically Ipsilateral. Let us look at this pathway now. Okay. So, the ipsilateral side what exactly is happening guys. So, cochlea. Right. What happens here? The sound is picked up. It goes uh, via the cranial nerve 8. Right. To the cochlear nucleus. Right. From here what happens? This is the ventral cochlear nucleus. From here it goes to the 7th cranial nerve. Okay. That is the 7th cranial nerve it will go, okay, that is the facial nerve, okay, and here the signal will reach the ipsilateral stapedius muscle. This is all is the pathway for ipsilateral. So, look at the pathway for ipsilateral. So, ipsilateral is very simple, guys, from the cranial nerve 8 to the cranial nerve 7, right, that is the facial nerve, the information reaches the stapedius muscle, okay. So, cranial nerve 8, facial nerve, that is the uh, cranial nerve 7, Stapedius contracts. So, what happens if stapedius contracts? There will not be much movement of the foot plate, right? So, basically, this is the stapes over the oval window, the foot plate of stapes over the oval window. So, the muscle itself will contract. So, there will not be much movement, right, of the stapes. So, there will be protection of the ear. So, you know what stapes is, right? Stapes is the bone, stapedius is the muscle. So, this muscle is being Control here so that the stapes won't move much against the oval window. So, now it will do some noise control. Okay, it will protect us from the noise. So, are you clear now with the ipsilateral thing? Now, let us move on to the contralateral thing. Now, contralateral guys, just uh, look at this. Contralateral means you are going to give the loud noise in one ear, right? And you are going to observe in the other ear. So, you are going to give the loud noise only in this ear. Okay. Now, how does it move? What is the pathway? So, the cochlea picks up the loud noise, right? It goes to the ventral cochlear nucleus. From here, it goes to the contralateral medial superior olivary nucleus. So, please understand here, from here it is going to the contralateral medial superior olivary nucleus. Okay. From here, where does it reach? The motor neuron of the facial nerve, right, the motor neuron of the facial nerve. Then you have the contralateral stapedius muscle. This is the stapedius muscle on the opposite side. So, this is the contralateral stapedius muscle. It, the information comes here and this stapedius muscle contracts, okay. So, actually both will contract. You can check on the ipsilateral side also it will contract, on the contralateral side also it will contract. So, the pathway has been explained. So, basically, Acoustic reflex testing 
is a part of impedance testing, right? If you, if you remember, impedance audiometry you have seen, tympanometry has one part and then you have seen the acoustic reflex measurements, right? So, actually both can be done together, right? So, tympanometry they will check, right? And with the tympanometer in the ear, they can also check the acoustic reflex, okay? So, basically, when will you do this? This is an objective test, right? So, here the patient cannot lie. You will do the checking. So, basically, so what is the testing you are doing here? You will check up the stapedius muscle will contract. If the stapedial, stapedius muscle contracts, then more sound will be received by the tympanometer, right? They are giving some input here and a little more than normal will get reflected because the stapedius muscle would have contracted and it will not allow much movement, right? So, more will get reflected, okay? So, basically, you have looked at the pathway. So, if we talk about the test, basically, you can do this test in infants and young children. You can see if the people are lying or not, right? You can detect some cochlear pathology also. You can see if there is some lesion in the nerve, right? Eighth nerve lesion, okay? In uh, eighth cranial nerve, if there is lesion, you can check, right? This is how you write eighth cranial nerve lesion, you can find. Then, um, you can see if there is a lesion in Facial nerve, that will be facial nerve, will be cranial nerve 7. You can detect lesions even in the facial nerve. Then you can also see if there is a lesion in brain stem. So, this uh, test is kind of useful. Okay. So, hope you have understood acoustic uh, reflex, what it is, the pathway, the test exactly. You are doing it along with impedance testing, right? You are doing it along with impedance testing, that is impedance audiometry along with that you are doing along with tympanometry you can do acoustic reflex measurement. So, instead of giving the loud sound and checking for the muscle uh, contracting or not, they actually do tymp uh, tympanometry to see the reflected sound whether it will be more or not. Okay. So, that is why it is combined here. Okay. That is all for now in acoustic reflex uh, measurement. Okay guys. See you. Bye bye. Say bye. <laughs>